So I'm Dr. Neiman in the Department of Pharmacology. Today we're going to review pharmacodynamics with an emphasis on agonist, antagonist, partial agonist, and inverse agonist. So if we consider a population of receptors, they're in the either resting or an active conformation, then they're in equilibrium between the two. And if we add an agonist to these receptors, C is the population of receptors that are active are now much greater, so the equilibrium gets shifted from inactive to an active conformation. In contrast, if we look at an antagonist, let's go back to our original population of receptors here. We have our resting and inactive, and when we add antagonist, nothing happens to the receptor. That is, the equilibrium does not change. They're in the same state. But how this works uh, pharmacologically is that now these receptors are they are not able to bind to the endogenous agonist, and so they don't respond. The endogenous agonist is inactive in the presence of an antagonist. If we want to quantitate these responses, we look at the dose-response curve, and we have the log drug on the x-axis here, and on the y-axis we have the response. And so we can see that we have drug A has a maximum response, which is the same as drug B, except for the EC50, or the concentration of drug required to get that response, is much less for drug A. So we would say that drug A is more potent than drug B. When we look at the maximum response, we have two drugs here, drug A and drug B. One has a lower maximum response, so that would be, in that case, drug A is, would be considered a partial agonist compared to the full agonist for drug B because it has a 100% maximum response. If we think back to our TBL on the brothers shoveling snow, one was taking the, a partial agonist. And so here I've drawn the drug as the partial agonist, where the endogenous agonist would be the full agonist, where we have the maximum response. So in the presence of the drug, the receptor is bound to the drug, and therefore it's unable to bind to the endogenous agonist, so we have a low response. We still have a response to the drug, but it's not as a maximum response that we would get from the endogenous agonist. So this is blocking the maximum response, and you can get a therapeutic benefit from this. So what advantage does this have over a full antagonist? Shown here in this slide, if you remember from the lecture, that we, have, we can have upregulation of the receptors. And what this means is if we have a chronic reduction in the receptor stimulation, and which would be the case in the presence of an antagonist, the body is going to want to try and compensate, and it will do that by upregulating the receptors. As long as the drug is on board, we do not, it's just not a problem. But if we have, take the drug away, now we're going to have an increased number of receptors, and so we're going to have a, a greater response when the drug is gone. If we think of the ghrelin case, we talked about an inverse agonist, and so how is this physiologically beneficial? Back to our receptor population. However, what you've seen here, now we have an equal number of receptors that are active and inactive. So this is sort of, this would be a high level of constitutive activity. So we, at basal level, we have a significant population of the receptors in the active conformation. First agonist, it binds to the active site, and but instead of shifting the receptor into the active conformation, it drives it back this way. So we end up with lowering the constitutive activity.